Sega. Sega. Ninja. <laughs> All the gearbox, dude. Speaking of Randy Pitchford, he had to apologize for this game, for the state it came out in. Because he promised all kinds of shit would be in it. <laughs> and it came out all bugged out and shit. He apologized for that, but he won't apologize for Borderlands movie. But yeah, gonna play Colonial Marines. Always wanted to play this shit. But yeah, this game was pretty disappointing when it came out. We're going to talk about another disappointing movie. Alien Romulus. Alien Rom Hack. And you know, the only reason I was even disappointed by this movie... Because, like... When I saw the trailer... And I saw that... Fede was directing in, in the Disney element. I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Like, here's this uh, kind of like known, respected director in the genre space who's known for like a, a remake of a, a, you know, a beloved genre movie. Does this mean they're on? And uh, with like a gender swapped main character. And in this, they didn't have the gender swap because it's already got a girl character, girl boss. <laughs> New campaign. And I was actually into the idea of like a oh but like on the topic of like the Evil Dead remake like it's you know it's well received so it makes sense that they would want him to do this movie plus he's not big enough to where he wouldn't like listen to whatever Disney says <laughs> you know Is this actually Michael B? Two human females, one of which is a child, and a damaged synthetic. Consider all colonial marines dispatched to LV-426 to be KIA. Repeat, all marines dispatched to LV-426 with KIA. LV-426. But yeah, so I kind of knew what the movie would be, like, another kind of a remake, but not, I coined the phrase, a uh, soft remake. Because, like, they basically are, like, remaking certain sequences or, like, framing shots in the same way or giving lines to new actors from older movies. But it's not a straight up shine, remake, Marines. you know. This isn't a drill and you aren't in Kansas anymore. Which to me it doesn't make sense who the movie is for. Cause like all the On references feet, and Marines. shit. For any new recruits, like, I'm Captain <clears throat> Cruz. And someone new wouldn't notice we all the references or care. Call, and someone that's familiar with all the Sulaco. movies. Rhino two three went in first, like me is like why the resistance. fuck? Are you just like rehashing all this shit and like so giving other characters we let you lines that belong to other people and shit? And I'll see you in the hangar in 20 mics. I was thinking a lot of uh, Force Awakens when I watched this. I feel like there's a lot of similarity. But, oh yeah, like I said, the only reason I was disappointed because the movie was exactly what I thought it was. But like the day and a half before I actually watched the movie when it came out. Like the day and a half before I watched it. it uh, I thought I was going to fucking freeze. <clears throat> uh, like the reviews were like really good. 
and not just from critics either. So like, I thought, okay, maybe it elevated a little bit above like rehashing shit. <laughs> I'm worried about two, three. Because as good as the good. Evil Dead movie you know, is, it's similar in that it's to get to it's a remake with so we can you know see who caused this. Sir, what happened in there? less interesting characters. But like visually, attention, chicks and dicks of the USS you know, Sephora. Cool. As of right this second, Rhino two one and Rhino two three are fighting to get a hold of the situation beast. we're in. We don't leave but I was actually Marines hoping that the movie would be over the next like two scarier hours, and like more gory. I guess it's PG-13. I didn't really pay attention to the rating. I think rated R would have helped. Lieutenant Reed, thanks for the interruption. We don't know how that boat got back here. Right now, we're worried Dude, about what's killing our Marines in there. This is a liquid situation. Information to follow as it comes online. Ready up. Good hunting, Marines. Oorah, Dash! Oorah! Listen up. What I need right now is... Like, hello. No what is that, screen no tearing? Bullshit. I need you to be my eyes in there. Report back anything you see so I know what I'm up against. Roger that. Tell Rhino 2-1 I'm en route to their location. It's been a while since I've seen the Evil Dead remake, so I don't really remember the side characters that much. But I'm pretty sure they're a lot better than the side characters in this movie. I shouldn't have been blindsided by all the <laughs> the DEI hires in the cast, but it definitely like throws you out of the movie when it's very obvious. Um, oh yeah, but like I said, what I was hoping for was like, you know, yeah, it might be derivative, but like I was hoping with the young cast and like a horror director, basically, that it would be bloodier one and it would have like a, kind of like a scream element with like a, like a young cast. A young cast of actors that will go on to all be like movie stars, basically, and like a there? you know a, a hip script or whatever. But that wasn't what we got. I think the only actor that could be like not even a movie star, but like a good actor is like the the android guy, <laughs> the hard R android guy. Shut it down. He has like a weird face. He looks like he's always in pain. Continuing on to the Sulaco. Winter out. Whoa. Oh yeah, it's supposed to be like Call of Duty, right? It doesn't look too bad. It had a patch though, so like, who knows how bad it was on release. Sephora actual. This is a that were there. Several injured over here. Need a corpsman right away for the down to reach. Yeah, like how Resurrection had a Mexican soldier. That explosion jacked the airlock on our end. We cannot use the umbilical without risking more lives. Sit tight and stabilize our men. He's gone, man. 2-1, what is the status of 2-3? Winner. Looks like he sent you over into this mess as well. Pull up your motion tracker. Tell Tarantino. Me what Press left bumper to bring up motion tracker. Flashing arrows display water movement. Got you two here. <laughs> and cool. I'm reading 2 3 to the south. Beyond the hangar, engineering perhaps. Moving? No. <clears throat> but so anyway, the movie starts out with like Something's... it's out in space, and you see the wreckage of the Nostromo. Like two, three, 
Yeah, this has the same issue as new Star Wars also, where, like, there's wreckage of the ship, but we saw it, like, fucking explode in space, you know, like a shockwave explosion. And then I guess somehow, like, the alien that she jettisoned in the first one, he got, like, frozen in carbonite or some shit. And that's how they, like, uh... It's not really clear what they're trying to do with it. But it gets onto a space station, basically. But you don't see, like, what happens on the, sh on the spaceship. Space station. Everything's already fucked up when they get there. <clears throat> but then, yeah, it's the chick with the android brother that's mentally challenged. <laughs> He's very disturbed. Sir, there's a like a half an unidentified synthetic spider past decade. Which half? Well he ain't saying much. And he has and a thing where he says stupid does. jokes. Actual out. Where it's like, what did the Is this running in sixty? No way. Not on 360. Um, he has a dumb joke where it's like, what it, uh, oh yeah, everyone has fucking accents, dude. You can't even tell what they're saying half the time. But he's like, uh, what it, the uh, guy who was a claustrophobic astronaut or whatever, he's like afraid of space is the punchline. It's fucking stupid. <laughs> They're basically on like a like a Wayland Utani like mining planet or whatever. What's going here? And she's like trying to get like a I don't know, like a passport or some money or something. She like gets denied. A flashlight to illuminate. They tell her to like go work in the mines or some shit. <laughs> and that's where she meets all these other young people, all these diverse people. <laughs> they get an Asian chick and a Latina chick and the, the fucking British chav guy. He's dressed like uh, Corey Feldman in Lost Boys. He has like a bandana. <laughs> and he, it says it's his cousin. But he looks darker skinned like he's Spanish or something. I thought because he had like the little earpiece like Michael Bean. I thought he was going to be like, like a Marine that gets like to caught up in the story or something. Way to wake up. That would have at least made him a little more interesting. But he's just a fucking nothing character. And the cousin with the bandana, he's like an asshole to the android all the time. He's like picking on him. He does the fucking thing with his finger. It's like, how are they gonna get away with this, dude? But I guess because he's not a real person, it's okay. But yeah, uh,. The mentally challenged thing, if it felt like also like a a DEI thing. But maybe people would say that about a uh, Alien Resurrection now. <laughs> I watched that guy, uh, Robert Meyer Burnett. And he was talking about how like uh, Romulus elevated. Alien Resurrection to him, and I totally agree. <laughs> I already loved Alien Resurrection, but it's way better. Uh, okay, so I found another alien game with a glitch. Or just, I was supposed to get attacked by an alien, and it never came out. And then I'm supposed to cut a guy down. What the fuck, dude? Right? Oh, 
Oh, there he is. Oh, uh, maybe on easy he doesn't attack you. <laughs> Spit on that thing. Oh. X is square. What the fuck? Yeah. Oh shit, there he is. Here's bitch ass. Oh shit. Are they in the wall? No. In the ceiling. It's pretty cool. Oh! Gotcha, bitch. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> that was cool. Come cut me down. I thought I already cut him down. Located keys from Rhino 23. There's some bodies down here, but some are missing. There are one or two Marines missing from Rhino 23. But anyway, yeah, so they basically look around the ship for a while. And, uh, oh, they find like a dead, or, like a fucked up synthetic. And they take his little chip and they put it into the. Uh, the, have to know the what mentally challenged <laughs> robot the guy. Can get us that. With all due it's respect, a funny shot when he takes his little chip out because it's like it kind of reminded me of like a, an 80s movie where like it would cut to like the back of a dummy head for like you know like in Total Recall when like it would cut to like a fake Arnold head or whatever or like in Terminator you know when it's like a, like a fake not CGI but a, like animatronic Arnold head well it was like a fake like back of his neck. You've got five to get that recorder and get back here. Like dummy or whatever. Bella Keys. Ashes, and he presses the button and his little an dish drive pops Thanks, out. <laughs> and they put the little disc in the mini disc. Something's down here with us. Cause yeah, he's always like yeah. spazzing out and shit. I feel like that was like <laughs> I'm surprised people won't complain about that. Oh, get the flavor 
No way the flight wreck didn't tape the assholes that did it to the Salako. If we make it back with this thing, who knows what we'll find out. Oh yeah, there's a part where, uh, like when they're looking around and shit, they explain why the Chav guy is like an asshole to the android. Uh, the Latina girl says that like, because they're split up, right? The, the android and the two guys are on the uh, space station and the white chick the main white chick the latina girl and the asian girl <laughs> they're all in the little transport Chick's like, uh, why is he such a dick to my brother? And, uh... Oh. Dude, trying to fucking talk and play. He ain't even help me. Where does it put me at? Don't crash. <laughs> Xenomorph dodge ability. How do you do that? Oh, it's versus mode. Uh, but anyway, she explains that, like, the Chav's parents died or his mom died. Because a uh, synthetic, like, there was like an accident or something and a synthetic like sacrificed her sacrifice three to save twelve or whatever. Targets on our left! So that makes it okay. Of them not to jump through the window. Oh. Yeah, Lord. Y'all enjoy that? O'Neill, where I am, I to your location in one mic. How do you do right. that? supposed to be on like medium easy but then yeah so like they all end up on the space station they end up in this like cryo chamber room where they're stealing these canisters I guess and uh oh when they put the new chip in the in the synth he has to like reboot <laughs> so he's like just frozen in this cringy pose and uh the cryo room like the power turns on and they get locked in there 
it's like a red light with water in the, on the floor. So it's kind of like copying the scene from Alien. And all these face huggers like wake up. But of course they're not a threat because like the one chap that he has like a pipe or whatever and, and he can just like react to swatting them in the dark basically. Them jumping out of the water at him. He just like hits them all out of the air and shit. No problem. The face huggers aren't the threat. Nor are the xenomorphs, really, for that matter. Yeah, the chav guy's like, there's something in the wall. And uh, at one point, like, one of the face huggers is about to, like, get the, the generic guy, I think, or whatever. And then the synth wakes up and he's, like, grabbing it by the tail and shit. <laughs> he just throws it against the wall and it blows up. And, uh, then they all pretty much escape and they try and get back to the. Oh yeah, and then when they were trapped in there, the girl, the main girl and the Asian chick go into the space station after them. I think it's already known that the Latina girl's pregnant. I don't know why she would even be there. <laughs> like, she doesn't really serve any purpose other than to, like, be a plot device. But, uh... Yeah, then they run into fucking, at a certain point, uh, after they fight off the face huggers. Oh yeah, one of them, because they all like meet up, and then one of them gets the Asian chick. She's like the worst version of like, like they actually pull it off of her at one point, because they freeze it. And she wakes up, she's like the worst version of like, the panicked character with the chest burster in them like she's just awful dude <laughs> and there's also supposed to be like a gestation period gestation period but it like comes out of her pretty quick but anyway yeah they get into this like safe room basically and have a scene where they they grab that synth from earlier that they took the chip out of I think or something like that it's just a fucking, or maybe it was a different one, but it's basically, it's Ian Holm as like a synthetic, which is f fucking stupid, dude. It looks ugly, like weird. I can't imagine what like Elijah Wood or, you know, anyone that worked with him think about like seeing this fucking abomination, CG abomination on the screen. I think it's worse than... Star Wars because of like at least in Mandalorian they had like a dude on set that kind of looked like uh, 80s Mark Hamill and then they just put like a deep fake over him but they tried to blend it a little this is just I, I think it's just a full CG thing but yeah he basically uh, he's there to like Oh yeah, I wrote like the way they have Ian Holm, the CG fake Ian Holm situated. He's kind of like short looking, he looks like a hobbit. <laughs> okay, so yeah, the order of events here gets muddled because my notes weren't like <laughs> super specific. But like, okay, so they have this scene with the fake Ian Holm. And uh... They split up again at some point, like the Asian chick goes back to the little, their little transport to like leave. And so it's the, the main chick, the brother, and the, the generic guy. Oh yeah, and the annoying Chad goes back to the little shuttle, or whatever it is. And uh... Oh yeah, like I said, the chest burster comes out quick because once they get on the little shuttle, it like pops out of her. <laughs> and the pregnant chick is just like 
she's the one like there with her instead of the chav guy and it's like the fuck like you see it's freaking out and you have a baby inside you why would you like be near this fucked up woman but because of all that it ends up crashing the, their little shuttle back into the space station basically And yeah, Ian Holm was basically there uh, to like, because uh, they have this thing where like the brother has a prime directive to like always protect the white chick because <laughs> her dad programmed it too. And so, but now that he has the new chip, he, his new prime directive is to do what's best for the company, for Waylon Yutani. So he's like, you know, He's like different to her or whatever. And there's a weird part where like they have this scene where like uh, Andy and the chick and the generic guy are like in this like quiet. They have to sneak through this area, this passage, with all these face huggers that don't notice them, I guess. <laughs> And then the fucking, the guy gets a phone call on his earpiece from the chick on the, on the little shuttle and she's like freaking out and shit. And it wakes up all the, all the uh, face huggers and it, they chase them. They never catch them, of course. The door is always just closed just in time before they can get in. Um, oh yeah, but I forgot there's a part before that happens. It's weird. It's like they tried to set up like some kind of romance or something subplot cause like Andy like there's like a jump scare and like the white chick and the generic guy are like they're in a there's a shot of them like in an embrace and uh Andy like is like leering at them like he's jealous <laughs> and then uh later on there's a line he has a line that he says to the white chick where he's like I wanted you to see me as more than a child. So I thought they were trying to, like, plant the seed, no pun intended, of, like, he was, like, in love with her or some shit. Because <laughs> why would he look at them like that? That was weird. And yeah, it's weird that there's like chest bursters and eggs. Like, they never show a queen. And like, there's like one that's like in the little shuttlecraft thing. Oh, yeah, when it was crashing back into the space station, the chav guy was like in the bottom decks or whatever, and he was like getting tossed around and shit. <laughs> it's pretty funny. But then there's just like an egg sack in their shuttlecraft somehow and like it's different I guess because it's on the wall instead of on the ground and it's like literally like a fucking vagina sack and he like uses a, like a taser that they had established earlier in the movie and he's like sticking the taser in the fucking vagina <laughs> and then uh, of course there's a part where like Oh yeah, and then the vagina, like, it has a fucking clit, and it fucking stabs him in the throat or whatever the fuck. I thought that was cool. And then he's just, like, on the ground, like, fucked up, and the acid from the vagina is, like, it's, like, squirting on him. <laughs> and she's just, like, the, the pregnant chick, she just doesn't even bother to, like, pull him out of the way or anything. She's just freaking out, like fucking up the other people's plan. But yeah, so the... Dr. So, uh, Andy and the white chick and the generic guy, they 
they get to the shuttle to try and save the pregnant girl and as they get there you see the fucking alien pop out of the little egg sack and it's already like if it, it looks like it's too big to like fit in that sack it's already kind of like not full grown but but when it comes out the head it's like it's literally like shaped like a dick <laughs> it's like Fetty's like oh it's all supposed to be sexual so I'll just throw this in because you know it's Giger he's a pervert so of course I have to have that in there <laughs> it's just like it's so just not subtle at all <laughs> But yeah, basically, uh, Andy won't open the door to save her, because, you know, he has to do what's best for the company. And they're all, like, freaking out at him, trying to get him to open it. And the, you see the xenomorph, like, coming up behind the pregnant girl, and then it, like, impales her in the, in the, in the back, you know, and, like, carries her off. And the, the white chick freaks out. And she does this fucking melodramatic thing, like, where she slaps Andy for not opening the door. And it, and then she goes, oh! Like, in the, like, you know, in those movies where, like, the mom, like, slaps their little kid or whatever, and then that's their reaction. They're, like, freaked out or, like, ashamed of themselves or whatever the fuck. I was like, oh, man, this is some corny-ass shit. This girl is no... Sigourney. She's no Ripley as much as they try to shoot her like it was. And then yeah, basically they get to this med lab, Andy and them, and they find the fucking, the black goo from Prometheus and uh, faking and home Rook is there and he like explains to them like uh, humanity needs a dose of evolution because of all the the diseases and shit whatever the fuck and that's why it really doesn't make sense that it's a CG Ian Holm like if they'd have uh, gotten Fastbender to come in and do like a, a David Android or whatever I would have like liked that that would have at least made sense right you know Maybe they, uh, and then they could have laid the seeds for Magneto return. But either they didn't think of that, or he was like, I'm above this shit, which I don't blame him. <laughs> but yeah, it just, uh, it just doesn't make sense. But anyway, yeah, they, they get the black goo, they take it out like fucking Dennis Nedry and the, the embryos and the barbas all came <laughs> Oh yeah, and he gives them, they have pulse rifles, they're white pulse rifles, and, and he's like, uh, and he's like, uh, this is what the colonial marines use or whatever, but it's basically like a pulse rifle mixed with a smart gun, because it has a, like an aimbot for her, <laughs> the guy's trying to explain it to her, the generic guy, and uh, that people were going to say that was sexist or whatever. <clears throat> uh, but Andy says, you know you can't use the gun because of the acid blood. But maybe it'll scare them. <laughs> like what? Just looking at a gun will like, scare off a Xena. It's fucking stupid. It's just there to set up a scene later on that's like, to me it's the only original cool sequence that they came up with for the movie. But yeah, it's just for that. But anyway. So then they get to this like tunnel area. It's like it's a it's like a it's kind of like what you just saw in the game where like 
They have all the, the alien shit on the walls and uh, they hear the pregnant girl screaming so they run after her. Not really stupid either. Though, like, yeah, and uh, it's, it's a weird kind of set because like the lighting, like, different it makes the floor blue. So it kind of just looks like a blue screen set. Like something out of like, you know, tag the clothes or some shit. Did he not die? That's good. Oh yeah, and the white chick fucking blasphemes when she like sees all the shit on the walls. Just gonna use it. Fucking stupid. But yeah, then they get to the chick and uh They uh, cut her down, and they want to, uh, I forget who's, I guess Andy suggests that, like, they should inject her with the black goo, because maybe it'll, like, help her heal and shit. And uh, the white girl's like, no, nah, we'll just get her back to the ship and put her in cryo. And at that point, Xenomorphs, they finally attack. I don't know how long it is into the movie. I'm sure well over an hour. But yeah, they finally attack and uh, fucking Andy gets tail whipped. And he goes on the ground and he starts spazzing out again. I guess the alien kills the generic guy at that point too. Look I didn't write it down, but I remember thinking, "Good." <laughs> Every character that died in this movie, I was glad to see them die. But so yeah, the the white chick and the what pregnant girl, love, love pregnant girl. <laughs> Latino pregnant girl, they're like gonna escape, right? But uh, she like has a crisis of conscience and, and has to go back for Andy. Oh, like I said, backtracking and shit. But she's like telling her to go go to the ship and put herself in the crime. So yeah, the white chick goes back for Andy, and then. Uh, I guess because the pregnant girl's like, how are you going to do this? Or how are you going to get back or whatever? And she's like, I'll find a way or something. I don't know. This white girl, she fucking sucks, dude. And, uh, oh, when they separate the pregnant girl, she injects herself with the black goo anyway. Because I guess she's fucked up. And then when uh, the white girl comes back for Andy, they have like, a shot of her rebox and she's framed pretty much how she's framed in like aliens how how uh, Sigourney's framed in aliens when she's looking for nude or whatever towards the end even in the first movie there's kind of that sort of shot where she's just looking around with like the hazard lights going off and shit and the smoke And then, yeah, she gets to Andy, and she saves him, and he's like, uh, well, at first he's like, just just leave me here. And it's, she's like, that's not in the best interest of the company or me. Because he doesn't want to have his smart chip pulled out. And then she takes it out, and he's back to the regular Andy. And he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. And she's like, no, I'm sorry. And then the fucking aliens come, and they have to, like, run away, and they get to, like, this dead-end door where they can't open it. And, uh, oh, that's when I 
Ash comes back again and he fucking says that line where like, you have my sympathy. And uh, like, why would he have the same line? Are they all programmed to say that shit when <laughs> they're talking to someone that's about to die? So then Rook is on the, the ship also with the pregnant girl. And he's like trying to get her to like let him control the ship so he can like steer her to the next nearest Whaling Utani station or whatever. Why would. That, that also doesn't make sense. Like, why would Whaling Utani leave this fucked up space station just sitting out there? Like, wouldn't they have blown it up and like taking their samples already like what the fuck they just left it out there <laughs> uh and then yeah andy and, and the white chick they think they're about to die and she asks him to like say one of his stupid jokes and uh I didn't write down what the joke was. This shit is crazy. Something about someone that wrote a book about zero gravity. I don't know what the fuck. But it gives her the idea to like reverse the gravity on the ship. And then this is like the only kind of cool sequence in the movie. Where like all the Xenos are coming after her. And she turns the gravity off. So they're all like floating. And now she can use the pulse rifle to shoot them. And it, it, like, it has unlimited bullets, even though it says it's getting low. Like, they even keep shooting after that. But yeah, she shoots all the Xenos, and then all their acid blood is, like, floating in the air, which is pretty cool. And she has to, like, fly through it, navigate through it to, to get out of there. And uh, at one point, cause, like I said, she was already low on bullets, and then she shoots to like push herself out of the like dodge of like fucking glob of jizz, <laughs> acid jizz or whatever. <clears throat> and yeah, I guess Andy can dodge that shit, no problem. And then they're like climbing up this like ladder or flying up like fucking Willy Wonka. <laughs> and uh, Andy's like already at the top and she's like almost there. Oh yeah, she loses her fucking gun like a dumbass. And uh, I guess the gravity is about to like come back on automatically. And she like gets close to like reaching up to him and then like the gravity falls. And she's like plummeting and shit. And then it's so fucking dumb, dude. Literally, a xenomorph like saves her life, <laughs> it, like grabs her with its tail. And uh, and al also there's like a elevator falling down. And Andy just like casually like has the strength to like, dude. These synthetics were never that strong. Like he just fucking stops the the elevator from falling on her and shit. And, uh, yeah, basically he, like, I guess he, like, rides down on the elevator or whatever the fuck, and he, like, manages to, like, pick up the pulse rifle on the way down or some shit, and then, uh, he, like, has a stupid line, get away from her, and there's a long pause, you bitch, <laughs> and he just shoots it. This fucking dumb dude this is the cringiest shit. Like I said, I don't know. It's so dumb because now, because this takes place in between up, Alien and Aliens. So, if the kid like watched it in that in the order without having seen it before, like, like why did uh, she steal his line? <laughs> it's so stupid.
Oh yeah, I forgot. Uh, yeah, so when the xenomorph saves her, like, I guess all the acid goes through the ship, and it's kind of like, like the, all the air like pulls everything down, and uh... I see a bush under us. Oh yeah, and they also like steal a shot from Alien Three, like after the Xenomorph saves her or whatever. It like comes up to her face real slow, like that shot in Alien Three. And then, yeah, there's a part where she, like, the white girl talks to Ash, and she's like, change of plans or whatever. And he gets mad at her. I guess she takes control over their little, their little ship or whatever. But then, like, a space station crashes. It's a pretty close shot of it, like, landing on, like, a... I guess it's landing on a planet or an asteroid field or some shit. I don't know, but... So then they're, like safe supposedly on their little ship and uh, they try to copy like the end of Alien 1 where she's like they can't even let her put her in her panties dude she's in these fucking loose shorts like you know how the white girls wear those loose like gym shorts or whatever that are like even if they don't have any ass it like shows like some under cheek <laughs> that's basically what she was wearing and she has like a fucking uh, it's not a flamethrower it's an ice ice blower on her back she looks like a fucking ghostbuster <laughs> uh, but yeah basically the pregnant girl she gives birth in her cryo too she was already in the crowd too, but she was, or I thought, but she like wasn't asleep yet. Uh, but yeah, she gives birth. It would be kind of gross if they hadn't already done it better in fucking Prometheus and shit. Uh, but she gives birth to like a fucking egg. <laughs> and then the white chick like takes it, and it like she drops it on the ground, and it like. I guess it secretes acid, so it kind of falls down into this little lower area. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot earlier when the pregnant girl was trying to uh, to like escape or call for help. Earlier, she like opens the door and there's like a long drop that she like falls down into. It's like, why is there a fucking hole there? It's like Home Alone and shit. Uh, but anyway, yeah, the egg opens up because she's like gonna kill it, right? But uh, there's like a baby in there. It has like a human face, human looking face. And then it pops out and it grows into like a fucking engineer xenomorph thing. It is pretty fucked up looking, but it's not even as fucked up looking as the the Ripley alien baby was from Resurrection when that first came out. So it's just like another like not as good reference. Oh yeah, and they even do the thing where she like slowly crawls into a spacesuit. And she basically has to like unlock these little, I think it's like four clamps or whatever, because the their little ship will crash too, because it it can't like close the doors or whatever. 
And so she has a fucking chase with the. Lock a waxful. We have arrived the in the first cargo bay. What are those guys called? Uh, space jockey, but... I thought they had another name. <laughs> anyway, the, the fucking Prometheus guys. Uh, she has like a little chase with the monster. And, uh, she has like a bully thing that like lets her... She drops out into space. And then the creature like comes after her, and it's like using its tongue to like try and crack into her helmet. But it's, her helmet's held strong, I guess. And she uses the the cable to like flip the switch <laughs> somehow on the clamp, and that releases the last clamp, and the the creature like falls down with the ship. Or he just falls into the planner or whatever the fuck. And she says, die, motherfucker, or whatever. <laughs> she doesn't even have a cool line or a close-up or anything. She's just a non-character. And yeah, the creature had, like, killed the... The pregnant chick. I think it tail whipped the Andy or whatever the fuck. I don't know. And then it ends with the fucking voiceover, like the original, where she's going to the Chewbacca system or whatever the fuck. Like, uh, I don't know. It was it was fucking whack. The ending sucked. I'm surprised it got such good reviews from people because you would think of it like. People would see through the nostalgia. Bit. I don't know, it's, like I said, it's kind of like Force Awakens, where it's like regurgitated shit, but done in a way that like a lot of people find entertaining. So we'll see. It's only been out for like a couple of days, so I don't know if, how much money it made or whatever. But yeah, it's pretty generic as fuck. Yeah, I remember watching the uh, Yo Video Games playthrough a long time ago. Game's pretty cool. I like it. 